In this video, we will take a look at how we can create a powder coated steel material for the frame under the tabletop. Before we continue, however, let's do the following. Let's look up references. This is particularly when you're new to this very helpful and honestly the first step you should do. It's tempting to jump into the render software and tweak the materials and do something that's based on your imagination, but particularly in industrial design, because we want to render something also ideally materials more realistic, our imagination can be fooled. So easiest way, look up references. So I typed in powder coated steel. There are a lot of images here I can find, different looks, different finishes. And then I can study those. Uh, here we have a very strong bump mapping. Reflectivity is there, actually also pretty strong. And the bump mapping makes this obviously not clear. And the, the surface is also a little bit uh, rough. Um, I can look around. This, for example, is here quite interesting. Those materials, it's a different type of powder coated steel. So it looks more like um, etched, etc. Here, this is also interesting because you see the highlight better. Uh, so do your do yourself a favor, look up references. Um, here, I found this website, for example, quite interesting. Because if you take a look at this, let's ignore the right one. But this could even particularly the left one, could really look like a close-up of a plaster wall or a drywall that is maybe coated with um, a latex glossy finish or so. The reason why I point this out is just, again, to go back to that in 3D rendering, we don't really create materials. We create visual illusions that make us think of materials. And then here um, they have some of these furniture pieces. Now you can see how actually maybe this powder coated material will look from a distance. Now this is also very important to, to keep in mind. For a close up, then you want to show the details, but from a little bit further away, this will look, look different. Let me go back to here one more time and uh, scroll down a little bit to where did I where did I see this one? Uh, yeah, here. I, for example, um, since I do also a lot of furniture design, and then the the renderings have to be matched to the materials. I have a pretty in extensive collection of. Um, the samples they have. So they sent me a sample box with all the various materials here. This is actually quite interesting now because this is all powder coated, just different finishes, more smooth, more structured. And then something like this I could use, I would make myself a tube like this, recreate the lighting, then create the material. And when my rendering matches my, my actual material, I know my material is correct. Okay, but we're doing something more at the beginning. Let's do a very basic powder coated material and then we do one that it, that looks a little bit more interesting. So the tabletop we will hide. So we can take a look at this. We go to here, um, right click horizontal split, then go to shader editor, uh, press N. Okay, uh, we want to have a light. We in this case, definitely need to have a light source better. So just a basic light. Shift, Control, and middle mouse button allows us to use the mouse to zoom in, kind of like nicely to this corner. Select this uh, frame piece. This has actually the bevel modifier. Let's turn this on. Okay, very good. And we will create a material. Um, I don't necessarily have to go here to the material properties inside the shader, uh, sorry, the node editor. I can simply click new and then I call this powder coated steel basic. Of course, spelled correctly. 
then zoom in. Again, now you see it's exactly the same. Hence, you don't really have to do stuff here. I honestly hardly ever really work in here. I just use the node editor. Then we we want to create a structure on it. So let's go back to um, this website there. Now, because here we can really nicely see how how this looks. We will use this as a reference. Then back to Blender. So we want to create kind of like a noisy surface on top. Okay, so for that we go add texture noise. Because I don't know how this will look, I will put the noise texture into the color. This then shows me how it's being stretched. That tells me, okay, the software doesn't understand how to wrap this uh, 3D texture over the geometry. So we went to add input texture coordinate and then object to vector. There you see now everything is more to scale. To scale, I mean, there's no stretching here. If we take this out, there you can see how this is distorted. Okay. Good. Shift control middle mouse button. We can zoom in a little bit more, pan down. Um, 1000. Okay, it makes it smaller. And then here we have detail. You see with detail, we can actually make this more. Uh, soft or we can make this more noisy we also have a roughness what does the roughness actually do now you see that it adds something to it there you can now we zoom a little bit more you can really see kind of like there's even more noise happening so we can we can tinker around here a little bit till we find something that looks looks good. I will go first, however, with a roughness zero. There's also an interesting distortion we can play with that makes it look more like a little bit LSD psychedelic. So let's keep this at zero. And scale is important. Now, again, we in in. In a deal case, we get a piece like this because then I can put a ruler next to it and measure it. Now we, we need to judge this a little bit, but essentially this has to look like a fine grain. So when we zoom out and this is too big or too fine, then we might have to adjust the value. Okay, so we established the scale. By the way, factor or color is the same factor, it's just more uh, black and white, that's the one we want to use now to create the structure on it. Add bump, vector goes into height, and then normal goes into normal. Very good. Point 0.1 uh, should be lower, point zero 0.01, still very big, point zero zero 0.001. Yeah, now there it starts to look a little bit better. And we are material preview. If we turn the light on, whoops, and select the light and maybe move it up a little bit more or above, you see how how much easier it is now to see the, the effect, particularly if we zoom out a little bit more. So now we can, we can play with these features more. Um, more reflective, less reflective add an additional roughness to it or not. No? Is this effect actually too big? Maybe a little bit weaker. Ah, see, this is now looks like a nice finish. Here, um, here's an interesting task for you to do. Next time when you see a car outside, pay really close attention to the car paint. You will notice that the car paint is not flat as glass. There is a little bit of a bumpiness to it. The grain or the bumpiness is still actually too big. So maybe 2000. Yeah, this is actually closer to maybe what I want. 
then I can continue playing with the details and see how this all looks. Maybe add a little bit of roughness. Oh, you see how now this looks like this pretty much. Yeah, no? pretty cool. You see, this is why I say work with references. So when we do something, we can study what we are doing and that helps us then to make sure the work we do is correct and check out the impact of with the roughness added to it now how the highlight changes okay so point two a little bit of roughness that makes it look better we would need to measure also how reflective really this thing is only because it's plastic Photo coded um, uh, is a plastic. Doesn't mean we have to set this to two as uh, to one. We can adjust the value also here to something that we like more. Here we can select this um, steel element and then go photo coded steel basic. There we are. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Okay. Now, uh, so. You see, quite, quite easy. Takes a little bit of playing around and not as crazy mouse movements. I'm trying to navigate this. Yeah, I kind of like to hear, so I see this better. And now I want to remove the noise a little bit more. Okay. Maybe I would like this effect to to not cover the surface as even so that means okay i might have to add shift a um, a color ramp in between there very good and then let's see when i do what what does it do there you can see how actually i'm i'm clamping the surface so now i have flat areas and the pieces sticking out you might notice, hey, that's isn't that the same way how we did the plastic shell material? To a certain degree, yeah. No? Repetitive elements. That's my whole my whole point. If you um the beauty of this is while at the beginning th this might be a lot to learn, there's a lot of repetition. So here maybe make this black. Uh, sorry, move this black to there and then when we change this, we can even overwrite this effect even a little bit more. So now we have a very, very subtle effect, maybe too subtle. Okay, and that's, and then really to figure out if this is good, we might have to do a rendering anyway. But for this, let's keep this as the the basic um, plastic to get a different type of this structure what we could try out one more time is so all this for example I like this is a process I use too a lot just experimenting um, and exploring because you can't ask the software hey where's the button to make me powder coated plastic let's maybe use a different material so maybe this one we put this into vector let's take a look at how this looks on there takes a moment okay uh, so now uh, scale is way too too small so 500 ah that doesn't look too bad and look at that it has also this kind of interesting um valley design so what happens if maybe we use this instead let's turn this off so we have a just a white material zoom in a little bit more so you see this is this has a different different look also here we have levels for detail to make this more noisy 
dimension. So there are a lot of funny things we can move around. When I select this, Shift D, I can also pop this one in there to override, for example, this effect. Maybe make this black. No? Okay. Good. So, and then for us, basically, it would be, well, which which method do I like more? This is kind of like the explorative phase where you try out various looks, and then you, at one point, will settle simply for the look you like. Okay, and that is, in a nutshell, how we do um, powder-coated steel which is just a plastic shell over it. And then we can also give this a color um, based on what we want.